everybody. Welcome again to next week's version of Art Tells a Story. And this week, I have Francesca Miller. Francesca, could you introduce yourself real quick and just say hey to everybody? Yes, yes, I can. Um, hey, everybody. Like Dante said, my name is Francesca. I'm a visual artist here in Columbus. Um, I also have a bunch of other art forms that I practice as well. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited to be on the show and talk to you all today. Cool, cool. So if you don't know what art tells a story is, what it is, is we are interviewing Columbus artists in the area, local art, and we're giving them an opportunity to share some of their um, pieces that they're doing, whether it's at home, whether it's downtown, whether it's at an art show. We just want to make sure that they have an opportunity to share what it is they do and who they are and how people can get in contact with them. Um, so Francesca is one of the people that I had a chance to see develop into the artist that she is today. So it's really an honor being able to interview her and hear what she has to say. And she has been one of the artists that have been doing murals downtown. So if you've been downtown, more than likely, I'm positive you saw one of the pieces that she done. I had put some pictures up and if you haven't seen them, make sure that you check that out. So Francesca, my first question for you is, we see right now that you're getting a lot of recognition. You're doing a lot of things. My question is, what was going on before you got to this point and how did you make it to where you are right now? Mm, um, wow, that's such a loaded question, Dante. <laughs> you can answer it so many ways, but um, I guess I'll just go with like, I feel like really uh, this year I started to take off with my art in the sense of, I don't know, I just, I feel like I stepped into 2020 with this newfound confidence in my art, you know, um, I think you recall when we were at the big table talk, how I had made a comment about, I don't know, it was just a shift happening in me artistically as far as just like, I don't want to make art to impress people anymore. Um, and as a result of that, a lot of people have been impressed. <laughs> so mm -hmm. interesting. But anyway, um, so I have been uh, just working on creating work that's really authentic to me, um, trying out new styles, taking on like large projects that kind of intimidated me as far as like before all of this, uh, the murals downtown and everything was happening. Uh, so right before the murals happened, actually, I had just finished like probably, well, technically it wasn't the largest mural I had ever done, but it was the largest I had ever completed. Um, at a church. It was very challenging to me. If you are familiar with my art, I mainly paint faces and just do a lot of expressive things. And so this mural was like straight lines, like it was a cityscape of Columbus. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just really challenging. So it was just stuff like that, that I was doing, just trying to step outside of my box. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. That's what's up. That's what's up. So something that you said was uh, creating art to impress people. Do you feel like that's something that a lot mm -hmm. of artists get caught up in doing and forgetting to create what they want to create? Mm, yeah, definitely. I think it's very easy. Um, you know, we love the attention. We love when we create something and everybody's like, oh, that's dope. Can you do this again? You know, you're going to uh, continue to create work that attracts people and it attracts that attention and attracts those opportunities. Because, of course, if people uh, love what they see, they're going to ask you to do it for them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very easy to do that. It's very easy. And I found myself in a very unhappy place when that was my story, you know, and it uh, calls for like constant comparison. I was like, okay, I'm getting a little bit of attention, but that person over there is getting like all these likes, you know? And I was like, okay, we got to stop. Like we got to just get rid of all this, like, because I'm not happy. I'm, you know, down in everything that I make. And I, I just don't love what I've always loved anymore. So I was like, I have to, I have to create from a different place. Wow, that's, that's serious. Cause it, it sounds like you've been able to make a transition into finding comfort in what it is you create without wait, mm -hmm. waiting for someone to validate what it is you created or yeah. paying too much attention to anyone critiquing what it is that you make. And what's interesting is when you did tell me that you were in this place where you was like, you know what, my art is my art. I'm ready to share it with everybody the way that it is. I'm ready to get the respect that I deserve. The pieces that I have behind me right here are the first two pieces that I had seen as we were talking. This, <laughs> one, this is one of my favorites because it feels so real. I remember when I first saw it, I was like, dang, who is that? And you had told me, you was like, 
it's just somebody that I created, but it really feels like a real person. And um, this one too. Mm-hmm. What was this one called? No, that one's called Many Shades of Brown. Many Shades of Brown, how you were able to take these colors, like the orange, white, and green, and add it to the hair. Like, this is actually paint, too. So seeing mm-hmm. your range of artistry, that, mm-hmm. I never saw that until I saw this. And now that you're doing a lot of things that you're doing downtown with the murals, I'm seeing that you have so many different skill sets when it comes to art. So can you talk a little <laughs> bit about how you got involved with that and what that's experience been like for you? Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm very involved with the Lincoln Theater. I love Susan Bradford, you know, like that's like a mom to me. So anyway, when um, in the wake of like George Floyd's murder and everything, you know, it caused a serious uprising. Um, and, and, you know, the, uh, everybody's buildings were having the windows buzzed out, all that sort of thing. So in response, there was an initiative started, uh, Art Unite CBUS, where um, I believe it was a, pa- a partnership between Kappa and the Greater Columbus Arts Council. Um, and just inviting artists to come to specific locations and paint over those boards that were now covering those buildings downtown. So uh, Susan Bradford, I reached out to myself, um, along with some other artists, and we're like, I want you guys on in on this project uh, as far as the mural at the Ohio Theater. Um, so myself, Richard Dwight Brown, Shelby, uh, we did that, tackled that. Uh, and you can see, you know, which panels are ours on my social media page. Um, and from there, it was just like invitation after invitation. Um, and yeah, that, so that's how I got involved. Honestly, it was just a connection with someone who knew me, knew my heart and just wanting to create art uh, that really highlights the beauty of black people. And she called me and was like, hey, here's an opportunity to do that very thing. So that's how it all started. <laughs> okay, so I, I, a lot of people that see the art downtown, they mm-hmm. love it. And what I always hear is it tells such a beautiful story and it's easy to see what the artists are trying to say. And a lot of people really love it. So mm-hmm. as an artist, what has you, what what, ha, what has the fact that you have been able to contribute to that, how does that make you feel and what has it done for you as an artist? Oh, man. Um, that has meant everything to me, honestly. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, being able to use my art in a very meaningful way is something that has been like a a strong conviction of mine, you know, ever since I started taking art seriously. Um, I've always been interested in the way that art has been used as a form of activism. Mm -hmm. And it really honestly wasn't until this year that I got a chance to do that. Actually, um, the past few years, well, I've kind of been doing art all of my life, but um, the past few years, I've really been focusing on just like strengthening my skills and technique and all of that so that as I step into the place of making art that's meaningful, it can look good too, you know? So um, I feel like the past few years of life have really been preparing me for doing these murals um, and everything I'm doing here hereafter. Um, But yeah, aside from that, it just means so much to be a part of this moment in history. You know, I think a lot of us struggled with and still struggle with like, what do I do in a time like this? What do I say? You know, how can I be involved? And um, yeah, I think a lot of our form of protest, some of us use our mouths, you know, people out there (laughs) marching up and down the street, chanting, um, educating people, all of that. But I use my hands. Um, I create, I create art that it provokes emotions in people, you know? Um, And so when I, recognize that I had the ability to do that. I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is my contribution to uh, making change that last. So. Wow. Okay. That, that's, that's deep. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> that's real deep. That's deep. It is what it is. <laughs> Thank you for uh, contributing to that art because like I said, I know a lot of people have seen it and everyone loves it. So I know that people can actually go downtown. If you haven't been downtown, make sure you go downtown, check out the work. There's lots of artists. But uh, Francesca, so what are some of the pieces of art that you're working on on your own? Would you be able to share some of that with us? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
as far as like what related to what's going on or just just, just anything like any like the art behind you any like pieces of art that you have like could you mm-hmm. break down the art and say what motivated you to do that and why are you working on that yeah sure um well since you talk about the art behind me we can start with that one yeah, so um so this painting i'm actually grab it off the wall uh this painting you'll actually find a larger version of this downtown if you go and check out the murals downtown Mm -hmm. um so you'll see like a copy of this painted at the fifth third bank uh building on uh, high and state street i believe it's right next to the ohio theater but anyway this image is called um kind of two different names reach slash save me um And I painted this actually for the uh, Franklin County Treasurer's Office. They had an exhibit a few months ago called, um, what's it called? Redemption. And they had a call for artists. And in response to it, I painted this. Uh, I've been on a kick lately of just painting and drawing dancers. I don't know, it's something about the human body that just really draws my eye, the way that we pose Um, and the way that we can communicate with our bodies through both movement and just, you know, just a simple pose and a photograph of that pose. Um, So I painted this in response. I actually came across this photograph. It's a a black male dancer and he was reaching, he was posed exactly like this, um, but the photo was black and white. And um, something about it, it was just really deep to me. The fact that he was surrounded by all of this darkness, but here it is, you can see the light shining so bright on his body and he's reaching and uh, this pot, this pose just like shouted hope to me. You know, it shouted like there was just, it's like, obviously I can't hear him, but this image just like screamed like, <laughs> you know, I, I have hope that I can be saved. And I'm like, what better way to include this in redemption than to capture that, so. Yeah, so that's that one. Um, And let's see if I can use my strength to put that back up. Oh. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Look, that's real. That's you you good. I thought it was real skill. You good. I thought it was skill, but it's a uh, Uh, got another piece that you can share with us. Yes, I do. Um, This doesn't have a super deep meaning. Honestly, <laughs> this one is a painting I did of Kobe Bryant. Um, and I did this back in when he passed away, actually. So uh, I paint live at this hotel the first Saturday of every month. And I had decided that once Black History Month hit, I would focus on just, you know, a Black figure. Um, and in light of his passing, you know, it was very tragic. Uh, so I wanted to do this painting to honor him. And this meant a lot to me because this was my first time doing a painting live without sketching it out beforehand. I actually didn't even know. Uh, I was going back and forth between him and somebody else. And all I had was like the background painted. And then I got to the hotel and I was like, forget it. Like, I'm just going to go for it. It's going to be Kobe. Um, So that's what that that one was. And then would you like to see the third one? I would. Yes. Yes. Okay. (laughs) That one. This is uh, Mother Harriet. Oh, this one's really big. Okay. All right. And I'm actually not allowed to fully disclose what this painting was painted for, but she will one day soon enough be uh, shipped off to DC to be placed in a very important space. And really? I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Um, oh, top secret. <laughs> It's it's it's, uh, it's low key for now, you know. One of these days, soon. <laughs> will we get to? Will, will we be able to see your work and know that it's yours though, in in due time? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, for you sure. Ain't, you ain't gotta go. <laughs> okay, we will leave it at yeah, that. Don't want you, know. you to get in trouble. We don't want you to get in no trouble. <laughs> yeah, you know, COVID has uh, set a lot of things back, but mm-hmm. soon and very soon, this will be able to uh, make its way to DC. Um, but this is obviously Harriet Tubman. I hope you guys can see this well. Yeah. Um, and this is actually, I love this one so much uh, because this is part of my experimentation with different styles and different approaches. So for so long, 
I was painting portraits, like just as you see them in a photograph, mm -hmm. you know, remaking their skin exactly the same, their hair, all of that. Um, but I don't know, some, it just became really frustrating to me to do that. So I was like, I just want to have fun with mm -hmm. everything I create. Um, and it's so crazy because when you finish a piece and you look at it, you're like, wow, this makes sense. Like what I was painting was speaking without me even, without my mind really being involved fully. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do the little splatter paint situation, you know? And so uh, somebody had pointed out to me once I was done, they were like, wow, it kind of looks like the constellation a little bit. And I was like, man, that's so deep considering, you know, she is an ancestor <laughs> and yeah. also we know how she was guided, you know, to freedom and wow. how uh, the stars had a major, major role in that. So, wow. Yeah, that's that piece. Oh, that's deep. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so, yeah, like that. I said, I, you know, I've been able to, to see that transitional stage where you begin to experiment with different, different colors, different styles of mm -hmm. art. Um, different faces and, and like that that painting with the the man is just reaching up. I was like, oh yeah. man, but she she actually uh she's switching it up a little bit on us. So yeah, I see the progress. <laughs> now you know, proud of you. I'm proud of you. So what we're gonna oh, do right now, you. we're gonna do right now is transition just a little bit. Um, so last week we did a trivia question and Matthias had asked the question, what side of town is Clown Cone on? And mm -hmm. the person that had won was Heather Reese. So this week, Francesca has a question. And for anyone that answers this question, they will receive a gift card. So Francesca, are you ready to ask the question? I am ready to ask okay. my question. <laughs> so go ahead with that question. All right. My question for you all is give us the first name of a very famous painter from here, Columbus, Ohio, whose last name is Robinson. <laughs> so let me repeat that. She said, what is the first name of the very, very famous Columbus artist whose last mm -hmm. name is Robinson? Mm -hmm. I know somebody know the answer to that. Don't <laughs> Somebody... Like, Got Somebody him. know the answer to that. Like, come on now. <laughs> so, yeah, te uh, tech team, did uh, anybody answer yet? Anybody answer yet? Anybody uh, Anybody throw a response out there? Yeah, Francesca, you can go ahead and, like, put that back. Go on. Okay. Sports, yeah, because right? I, I think it's real pretty in the background, you know? I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this whole skill situation. Yeah. That's cool. You can remove the earbuds for now. We're going to get right back to this. What you so say? You can, you can remove the earbuds and put it up. You can do that real quick. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, someone answered. Was it Michelle Mitchell? Michelle Mitchell answered the question. Okay. Michelle Mitchell. <laughs> Wait a second. Is that your mom, Francesca? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> So funny. Look, hey mom, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's what's up, mom. We appreciate you for supporting Francesca and for coming through and answering that question. Yes, it is Amina Robinson. We love her art and everything that she's done for the city of Columbus. Um, you know, it's really important to make sure that we pay attention to the artists of today too, because I believe that every artist has an opportunity to be just as big as she was, but we also have to support them and recognize their talents and their gifts make sure that we're investing in them and giving them a platform. So that's why it's important to have moments like this that we can look back on as time progresses and we see everything that they create and we can go back to the beginning. And that's that's documenting history. That's that's yeah, literally yeah. documenting history. So once again, Francesca, thank you for being a part of this. Um, <laughs> so I want to talk about the, the a little bit more about the mural downtown. But before that, let's talk about your first mural that you ever did. So. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah oh it makes me laugh every time we're going there so can you tell us how <laughs> that came about and then what happened with that mural yes so what dante is referring to is um, a project I had the opportunity to uh, start 
um, my sophomore year of college, I went to Ohio State University, OH, IO. Um, but anyway, uh, they have a program there called the STEP program. And what they do is they give second year students uh, an opportunity to submit a proposal of something you want to do, anything that advances you as a person. Um, and so mine uh, was a submission of a mural project. I said I wanted to uh, do something that would beautify a community in our city that is considered like one of the most like, I don't know, just the bottom of the barrel type neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Linden, Linden area was uh, where I chose. And I don't remember the address, but it's this huge building on the corner of like 18th and Cleveland Avenue. And uh, I started a mural there and it was called a Dream Again mural. Um, and it was, it was a, it was a wonderful learning experience, to be honest with you. Um, I, I I don't know why no one around me told me like, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> like the wall was like 72 feet wide and 27 feet high. I mean, we were standing on electricians ladders. None of us knew what we were doing. Like those of us who were out there painting, it was, it's funny. You can actually see pictures of uh, like that document the experience on a Facebook page called the Greater Linden Mural Project page. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does oh. not reflect my skills. Oh, go ahead, Dante. Oh, Francesca, if it was so difficult, why did you push through with it and what ended up happening to the mural? Yeah, um, uh, I pushed through with it. I think I honestly am, uh, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. Um, I, I think I was just up for the challenge. I think it was, I was very ambitious, ambitious, and I was like, why, why not? I'll never know if I'm capable of doing this unless I give it a chance. Um, So I did. And unfortunately, it was painted over. Uh, Some new people bought the building. You know, they didn't really like seek out the artists or anything. They just covered it up. And very unfortunate. (laughs) But yeah, so that's what happened to it wow but like i said it's real interesting that that experience took place for you but now you're doing murals all over the city so (laughs) it just goes to show how you know with time and being dedicated and pushing through um and and making sure that you persevere how it adds up and Mm -hmm. you become something later on in life and for you it happened yeah in about a good four years, because I said that's when I first had met you and saw what you were doing. Yeah, that was a big old building. It was. <laughs> it was huge. <laughs> big, <laughs> man. Oh man, the wall sucked. It was like stucco. <laughs> like oh my, we were like dabbing the paint brushes against it. Like it just won't stay. We're using Walmart paint. That like <laughs> that was so crazy. Yeah. Okay, crazy. but. So, you know, with the murals that's, that's taking place downtown, um, mm-hmm. it's the first time I think Columbus has done anything of that nature. Some people say mm-hmm. it's, it, it eventually would have happened. Some people say it's more of a response to what's taking place with the protests and uh, the, mm-hmm. the, you know, social justice and bringing awareness to Black issues. My question to you yeah. as one of the artists What do you think the next step is when it comes to the murals and the message that's being sent with them? Should they continue to be downtown? Should they spread to different parts of town? Should it be in black neighborhoods? Mm. Should it like what what should happen next with those murals? Mm. Um, Yeah, those are those are great questions. And um, it's a lot of conversation going around about those. I think definitely absolutely preserve them. You know, people are like, I hope they don't throw them away. I'm like, they're not going to throw them away because it's just going to cause another uproar. You know, <laughs> like, I don't, I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. Um, but I, I have heard talk about like a digital catalog being created, you know, someone going around photographing all of them. So that's a, a great thing. You know, I think it's definitely necessary to happen. Um, as far as ways to preserve like the actual murals themselves man there are so many um and i think there's a billion and one things that could be done with them um i've heard suggestions of oh they should create like a historic park 
there's so many like abandoned lots in our city, you know, so much space where, where that something for that could be made. Um, I actually love that idea that you kind of unintentionally suggested as far as them like kind of moving around. Yeah. Um, I've actually had people reach out to me expressing like we would love if, uh, you know, like in the suburb areas, they're like, we would love if there could be some kind of traveling exhibition of these murals. Um, but though, again, that's something that's just kind of like temporary, you know, because it's like, okay, where is their final resting place right. going to be? Um, and honestly, I mean, I don't know. I think it's going to take everybody coming together and being like, hey, like we have this space, you know, where we can place these, these be displayed. Um, yeah, I, I just know it's definitely, definitely important that they uh, are preserved and I believe uh, that they continue to be accessible to the public so people can go and, you know, visit them, reflect on them. I think it'll be a great opportunity for like students and schools to go and, you know, check them out. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay. So we, we are, we're about to wrap up and finish up. My final question to you is what do you hope happens with your art and what do you hope people see and feel when they see your art? Mm. What do I hope happens with my art? Um, I hope it, I just want to continue to put out those meaningful messages. Like I said, just really create um, work that inspires people, um, work that definitely documents like moments that we're living in you know um that's how I, that is definitely one way i want my art to to operate is to be something that people can um look back on and remember especially now like this time mm -hmm. in history um and specifically i want people to take hope away from it you know i don't want them to be while it has been a very heavy time um, I don't want them to be overwhelmed with, you know, the darkness and the, the, the pain that we've all been surrounded by. Um, but I want people to always take away hope when they look at my art. And if you check out my social media, you'll see explanations beneath some of the murals I've done. Um, and uh, those are the types of messages that I want people to walk away for, with because I think it's necessary. Okay. Well, that's cool. Well, uh yeah, I, I think it's important that people do take away from art and, um, you know, you can interpret it however you feel or, or see fit, mm -hmm. but it's always something that you can look at and find something in, and hopefully it mm -hmm. inspires everyone that sees it. Like I said, I'm a person that has seen her art, I've seen it grow, I've seen her <laughs> do different art styles, and as time goes on, I just see all of the potential and what it's going to become, and like, man, it, it's going to get better than this, so... Francesca, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing with us and for um, giving us an opportunity to see what you create artistically and breaking down some of those explanations and some of the things that are going to be happening with you. Um, what is the best way for people to get in contact with you and to buy some of your art? Um, right now, the best way is to reach out to me on social media. So on Instagram, my tag is underscore call me free. Um, I'm Francesca Miller on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, yes, website is coming soon. But for now, yeah. those are the best ways to, <laughs> to okay. connect with me. So. Okay, cool. Well, Francesca, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I appreciate you. Yeah. And to everyone else that's been tuning in to the shows on a weekly basis, thank you so much. Um, and let's continue to make sure that we take it a step further and support the artists because it's, it's so easy to, to look at what they're doing and say, great job, we like this, this is good. But they exist and they continue to create when we show that support. So, you know, the artists that we're showing, if you have, if you can, if, you, if, it, if it's possible, Make sure that you support them, whether it be just following them, uh, patronizing some of their work and showing what they create to anyone that you know so we can get their names out there. 
Um, so that wraps up this episode. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Dante with Spikes. This is Art Tells a Story, and I will be sitting down with you again next week. So I will see you all later. Hope you have a good day, and I'll see you next week. Bye.